so glad to have you here uh, for this five days of lives um, work life balance tips for work at home moms. Um, I'm going to go ahead and wait just a minute to uh, let people get on here. And while I do that, I am going to um, get my phone set up so that I can see who is joining me live today. So happy to be here with you guys. Uh, let me look here. Okay. Um... Just a few seconds. Um, I want to be respectful of your time. I know you're busy. We're all busy, busy. Um, okay, so as you come on, please go ahead and just um, make a note in the comment section and let me know you're here. Um, tell me where you're tuning in from. And um, if you'd like to share what your business or profession is. That would be awesome. I'd like to get to know you guys better. And um, also, if you want to let me know how old your kids are, um, if you feel comfortable doing that, that would be cool too. Because um, I know when you have kids at different ages, uh, there's a huge array of um, issues and challenges that come up like at each age range so I can try to um, address those as well so um, I'm gonna go ahead and get started uh, my name is Leah Borski um, I have been a work-at-home mom for 12 years in um, a variety of different industries and professions and through every stage of my kids lives um, from infancy and toddler years all the way up till we're now um, finishing up our second year homeschooling. So I've been homeschooling my kids um, for the last two years. So um, I know, like I said, there's lots of different considerations um, based on where you're at in your motherhood journey and um, your child's different levels. So. Um, I'll try to be considerate of those as we go along this week. Um, so, like I said, I'm Leah Borski. I am a self-care and stress management coach and also nutrition author. And I help ambitious, overwhelmed moms feel more energy, harmony, and relief. So, um, since I've had this experience as a work at home mom for so many years and through so many different um, experiences, I realized that I have the opportunity to help other moms who might be feeling frustrated or struggling um, or dealing with a lot of that mom guilt that happens when we decide that we want to be full time moms. And we also want to have a career and do those simultaneously. And um, we're kind of a unique, small uh, percentage of the mom population, I feel like. And so um, having support and others who understand what that's like and the challenges that come with that, I feel like is really important. And I want to be a part of that support for other moms. So that's why I'm doing this um, series of lives this week. And um, so I know that some of you homeschool your kids like I do. Or your um, kids are younger, so not school age yet. So you're pretty used to doing this full-time uh, mom thing while you're working. And some of you have kids that are school age and go to public school and so you're looking at the next two to three months uh, with your kids home with you and trying to figure out how to balance all this and keep them occupied and keep everyone happy um, while you're working and spending time with your kids over the summer. So um, I've dealt with all this from a whole bunch of different angles so I'm gonna go ahead and jump in, share some of the things that have 
worked for me and then hopefully help you um, build some structure and uh, tips into your daily life that will help you get through this also. So my first topic I'm starting with today is don't let the kids get bored. I know that that seems pretty obvious and um, like where do you start with that? So for me, my kids, if they don't have any direction and I just send them off to do whatever, um, they have a variety of ways to let me know that they're bored. And usually it's not by just coming out and saying, Mom, I'm bored. Although that does happen, not very often usually. It um, manifests in bickering and arguing and um, them coming to me complaining about each other or a situation or whatever. And so um, when everyone is fighting, it makes my work harder and it makes our days together a lot less fun. So um, that also leads to guilt, which um, I'm sure you're familiar with also. Um, but we don't want any of that. So here's my tip for this. Uh, number one, don't try to get all your working hours done while your kids are awake. So it's probably not going to happen. And um, it's kind. it feels like banging your head against a wall when you try to do it. It's super frustrating because um, kids just aren't generally going to allow you to do that without having something in place for them to keep them busy uh, while you do that. So years ago, um, when I was working at a, as a medical transcriptionist, um, my kids were in their baby and toddler years, and I used to get up at 4.30 every morning and work three hours straight, um, get a solid three hours in before they'd wake up for the day. And then um, I'd work one to two hours in the afternoon during nap times, and then I would sprinkle the rest in throughout the day uh, wherever I could, and sometimes finish up when my husband would get home from work. So, um... There were times when my husband was gone, he's in the military, he um, has had some jobs where his schedule is super uh, crazy and unpredictable, and we also uh, went through a period of two straight years where he wasn't uh, even in the same state as us, let alone the same house, so I didn't have that support um, and that backup of another parent there adult there to help me um, manage. So I had to figure out a way to balance it all out, get it all done, get them taken care of um, without that support. So I know what that feels like too. I know um, sometimes it can be frustrating when you're getting advice from somebody who uh, doesn't understand what it feels like to have to do this on your own. Um, but I promise you, I do, and so I try to make sure that when I am supporting work-at-home moms that I take that into account. I know everybody does not have um, support or someone to back them up like that. So um, during those times, I would fit work in wherever I could, and um, I need to mention that that point in my journey, I didn't have good self-care practices at all, and I was really just learning how to eat healthier um, at the time, and I know now that that made it a lot more difficult for me um, t than it needed to be to, to be a work-at-home mom and um, do all the things that I needed to do. Um, I was always tired in the afternoons, like a lot of times drifting off at my desk, tired, um, but that was my son's nap time, and I had to push through. Usually it was uh, with a lot of coffee. Um, yeah, a lot of coffee. And it's not, good for, it's not good for your nervous system to rely on caffeine that way, especially all day long, and I know that it threw off my 
sleep patterns and everything else and it starts to have this snowball effect um, that is really difficult to maneuver once you get going with that and so um, I'm just looking at my notes here I um, with that I also didn't have a lot of me time and there wasn't a lot of room in my life for fun at all it was really just like um, survival mode so work uh, clean cook take care of babies that's pretty much what my life was and um, those were some really hard years when I look back on that and and think about how that was um, and I know that that's just a season and um, it does pass but there are ways to make it easier on yourself and I have learned that over the years and so I will be sharing some tips and easy fixes along those lines um, as we go together through this week. So my tip number two is to plan activities and outings for the week during the weekend prior. So we usually do one to two outings per week. Um, we'll do the library or the park. Um, we have the boardwalk and beach within walking distance of us, which is super nice. Um, or we'll do the zoo. And so my kids, uh, still also have their, their ra finishing up about their last two weeks of um, weekly activities that they do, uh, Cub Scouts and gymnastics. So we have that for a couple weeks and then after that I'll be adding in more, probably closer to like two or three um, weekly fun activities that we go do um, for the summer. So yesterday I took, I have this dry erase board I'm just going to show you. I just listed out a couple of excursions um, that I'm going to do with the kids this week. So if you can see that, I hope it's not backwards. Um, but so I listed out and that helps me stay track, keep, keep track of what I have planned to do, schedule my work around that. And then um, also they see that and so they know what we have to look forward to. And so it gives us all something to look forward to during the week, make sure that um, we have something fun to do together. And it's kind of an incentive for them to, um, to cooperate because I can remind them, uh, which I do have to do generally a couple times, just like, hey, if you, you know, we have this, like Wednesday we're going to the boardwalk and beach, so I will let them know, like, we're gonna go do this on Wednesday, but I have to get my work done for us to be able to do that, so I need your help cooperating, you know, doing your tasks, whatever it is that they need to do. And um, they usually, that helps rein them in and get them more cooperative. Um, the second part of this is having activities to do at home. So with homeschooling, I tried for a really long time to have a very rigid schedule. Um, and plan everything out and you know specific times of day and I know that works really well for some people doesn't work for us so I've adjusted things and um, I try to keep a very simple structure so there is structure but it's not rigid we have some flexibility so I found that if I let my kids loose to just do whatever, which is the complete opposite, that doesn't work either. Um, they get overwhelmed with too many options and um, then they com they're complaining that they don't have anything to do. So that's no good either. So I found um, kind of a, a middle point um, and I just do a simple breakdown so that we know each day this is what we're going to do. We don't ever do it all in the same order even, but we know these are the chunks that are going to happen. So they have chores for 30 minutes. They have reading time for 30 minutes. They have outside time for an hour. And then they have free time for an hour, and we usually do that two times a day. So that can include um, board games, puzzles, Legos, arts and crafts, um, that kind of stuff. And so... For each section, they still have a choice of what to do, like reading time, they still get to choose what book they're going to read, 
Um, for free time, they get to play or choose what game they're going to play, things like that. It takes away some of the overwhelm of having too many choices and too much open space in the schedule, but then it also keeps us focused. So they know that what they're doing is for us designated period of time so they know that I'm not gonna just leave them to read a book for two hours and they get you know fidgety or bored or distracted or whatever and move on to something else it's a set time frame and then they know that we're gonna move on to the next thing um, and then this also helps me be more focused in my work because now I know I have 30 minutes what can I get done in these 30 minutes and I will go through my task list and just start ticking things off so um, that helps me to power through and be more efficient in my work too. So my third and final tip for today is to have a backup plan. So um, there's always going to be times when we, um, I'm sorry, I'm looking at my notes. Oh, I'm sorry. So we have a critical uh, project or meeting with a client or like today I'm doing Facebook lives I cannot have my kids coming in here interrupting um, so this is these are the times when I set out a specific activity for them to do so um, for example with the lives that I'm doing this week my husband is at work my kids are in the other room with a designated task I am um, I sent them in there with notebooks and pencils and art supplies. My daughter is drawing pictures and my son is making lists of um, like packing lists because we're going camping this weekend and so I asked him to make a list so that he can be prepared with all the things make sure that he has all the activities and things that he wants to do while we're there and all the supplies for that. So um, my kids are 7 and 11 now and I feel comfortable with being able to set them up for 30 to 60 minutes um, with an activity and then uh, having them meet my expectation that they cooperate and don't interrupt me during this time. Um, but even like last fall, I was doing a, um, a live interview online for a women's health summit and I wasn't quite sure that they were ready to um, do that without interrupting and I was a little bit nervous about it so I went ahead and uh, had my neighbor I have a teenage neighbor upstairs who babysits I had her come down and just hang out with them play games for an hour while I did my interview um, but so now that I know that they can do that I will set them up I will um, plan a specific activity usually uh, put all the supplies together put the instructions with it and leave them to do that while I do my thing. Um, so I know that it's different when your kids are smaller or they're just not at that level yet where they can be left alone in a room with crayons or whatever for you know more than five minutes. Um, so in that case I would recommend seeing if you can swap play dates with a friend um, or hire a trusted high schooler or neighbor like I did um, just to come over and hang out with them in your house for a designated period of time um, or else try to schedule those critical uh, working times during your kids regular nap and sleep times so that you don't have to worry about them being up and unsupervised um, and so if you're not sure if your kids are ready, they're kind of that borderline age or level, I would try uh, doing a test run during a non-critical time. So kind of like a drill. So pretend that, you know, you're working for half an hour and you can't be interrupted and, and go through that series of instructions with them so that they understand what that's like and see how it goes. Um, and then, you know, from there you can know if they're ready to to let you do that or not okay so there you have it that's my top tips for making sure that the kids don't get bored 
and we get our work done and everyone is happy. So to recap, um, you're going to complete as much of your work as possible during uh, times while your kids are sleeping. The next one is to plan one to two outings per week so that you all have consistent fun family time to look forward to and it's kind of like an incentive to get everybody on board with the schedule that you're creating. The next one is to create a simple structure for the day to keep everyone focused and eliminate overwhelm. Then have a backup plan and set up activity stations for critical work times when you need the kids to stay busy on their own. And then the last one is enlist help if you need supervision for your kids during those times. So I have more great tips coming over the next few days and today is sort of like the framework that we're going to use to build on as we go through the next um, few days. I'll be on here every day through Friday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. And also, each day I'm going to be sharing my super energy snack of the day. Um, I'm a huge advocate of healthy foods for energy and stress relief. And uh, nutrition is one of the major ways that I help to support moms um, who need help with stress relief. And so today's snack, um, I went ahead and got it ready before, so I'm just going to show this to you if I can. Um, so I have sliced apples, and then with that, I do a peanut butter yogurt dip with chia seeds. And so the peanut butter dip is just natural peanut butter. You could um, substitute out almond butter if you like that better. And then uh, plain non-fat yogurt, I mix that together. It helps reduce some of the fat uh, from the peanut butter and then add some more protein and other nutrients there. And it makes the peanut butter go further so you have more dip. Um, and then, so this snack is high in protein, healthy fats, and fiber for long-term energy. And also, um, the chia seeds specifically are great for improving your mood and they're awesome for bone health. They have more calcium um, than milk. And they also help control appetite and um, cleanse the digestive tract. So this is like the perfect snack. Kids love it too. So um, I always try to share things that I will have with my kids. So I'm not like in the kitchen making a gazillion different things. We all eat pretty much the same stuff. So that saves time. And I will have more... Um, tips as far as time management and healthy eating and lots more good stuff coming for you this week. I'm going to go ahead and take off and enjoy my snack and some time with my kids and I will see you all tomorrow at 1 p.m. Thanks for being here. Bye.